Dear yeah. ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our 8th season of Chemcon TV's News Bulletin. With CCTV, we can share news and information from Chemcon Asia 2019 in Seoul with you. Also in this series of CCTV's News Bulletins, you can expect interviews with authority and industry experts, today we'll focus on K-Reach, as of tomorrow sound bites from the sessions, every day a statement of the day and a forecast for the day, and also in Seoul we like to have a local reporter showing us the Seoul of Seoul. However, it's not always easy to find a local reporter, since besides being passionate about Seoul and being fluent in English, you need to have the balls to appear on camera. So let's use a little Chemcon TV magic and throw this ball to a location where they enjoy playing hardball, the Jamsil Baseball Stadium. And let's ask the person who ever catches it to be our local reporter. Wow, great catch. Sorry to surprise you. I'll say all. What's your name? Han Jung Lee. Hi, Han Jung. You're live on TV. We are looking for someone to show us the secrets of Seoul. Will you accept the challenge and be voluntarily uh, our local reporter this week? Sure, I'm into all kinds of challenges. Kasamida. Could you start with telling a little bit about the location where you are? I'm here at Tamsil Baseball Stadium. The location of 1988 Summer Olympics here in Seoul. Koreans love baseball. It's one of the most popular sports in Korea. Baseball was introduced to Korea in 1905 by American missionaries during the time of the Great Korean Empire. The Korean baseball season runs from March to October and the teams have magnificent names like Hanwha Eagles, Samsung Lions and SK Wyverns. Jamshil Baseball Stadium is home to the LG Twins and the last season's champion, Doosan Bears. Interesting to see so many chemical related companies as sponsors of these teams. Did you know that many of your viewers this week are also working for chemical companies? Good to know! What other topics would you like to see more this week? Ah, that's up to you. But I know my kids like reports with animals. That can be arranged. Thank you, we'll connect again later. Now let's focus on another issue where it's important to keep your eyes on the ball. K-Reach. Please watch the highlights of that interview. Already, before the end of this month, all companies are required to pre-register all their existing substances they manufacture in or import into Korea over one ton per year. This will allow them to benefit from the grace periods of the K-REACH registration and continue to stay in business. What are the key requirements now for that pre-notification? Yeah, when you're doing the pre-registration, you need to collect at least uh, the chemical identity. You need to understand what is your volume tier and also what is the hazard classification. And very important, what is the usage of the chemical. In case you need to appoint an own representative, what are the challenges? Actually, to submit the pre-registration, we have to appoint the foreign manufacturer, have to appoint the OR first and get an approval from the authority. And it takes more than two to three days to get an approval. And it takes time to start the real submission of the pre-registration. The complete interview can be viewed at our website and YouTube channel, or just press the CCTV button in our ChemConnect app. Which brings me to the statement of the day. Also in Seoul, we use our ChemConnect app that allows us to share news and allows you to engage in interactive polls. And you can use it for coming together. Every day, one special poll, the statement of the day. We just discussed compliance needs and requirements for K-REACH, but sometimes even compliance-driven companies do not comply. The potential legal consequences of non-compliance in Korea is something I will discuss with Jun Lee from Kim and Chang. I am Seo Jun. Unlike some other jurisdictions, violation of environmental laws in Korea, such as K-REACH, generally carries not only administrative penalties, but also criminal penalties, even if non-compliance was due to negligence without intent. Therefore, it is crucial for business owners in Korea to understand the environmental laws applicable to their business and to ensure compliance. June, there have been several cases of non-compliance recently in Korea. Can you tell us what happens? Once non-compliance is discovered, the MOE, the Ministry of Environment or local government can issue an administrative order to correct the non-compliance and potentially refer the case to prosecutor's office. Both proceedings can proceed in parallel which can last for a significant period of time. So that's a huge risk for companies. It is. So your statement is? 
top management must be acutely aware of the risks of non-compliance. Thank you for your statement. Let's check with our local reporter and see where she is. You indicated you like something with animals, so I'm here in a cat cafe where you can drink, relax, play with cats, or they play with you. The typical something you find here in Seoul, especially younger urban Koreans have become cat lovers nowadays, which is a break with the past where the cats were disliked in Korea. Cats were seen as a deliverers of bad fortune and only useful in controlling rats and as medicine for people with rheumatism. There's an expression, curiosity kills the cat. Out of curiosity, what's the recipe of that medicine? It's a gruesome recipe. Put the cat in a sack, pounce it on the ground, or hit with the hammer before you place the cat, sometimes still alive, into the boiling water. Add ginger, nuts, and dates. You have a medicine called goyang soju. It usually takes 10 cats to produce one small bottle of cat soju. An alcoholic elixir thought to keep arthritis at bay for a few weeks. Ooh, that's a very ugly way of making an elixir. I know a much more happier Chinese folklore story of making an immortality elixir by a rabbit on the moon. Do you have a similar story in Korea? Rabbit, you say? We also have a, such a story. I see Camp on TV Magic brought you to a rabbit cafe. Can you tell us how your rabbit ended up on the moon? The moon rabbit. The rabbit was once studying Buddhism with a fox and a monkey. To test their faith, the emperor of the heavens asked them to bring food. The fox caught a fish, the monkey returned with fruit, the rabbit could find nothing but the grass, so he jumped into a fire and offered himself. The emperor was touched by the rabbit's commitment and appointed the rabbit as the guardian of the moon. Besides the rabbit on the moon, I'm happy there are also rabbits here to pet. Nice! My seven-year-old daughter here also likes rabbits and dogs, but no pets for her since her father is traveling too much. Dog, you say? You should bring your daughter to this place. A great location to hug a dog. <coughs> Many people visit this cafe with their dogs, fun for dog lovers and dogs alike. Dogs love to play here. Either you can bring your own or cuddle one of the many cafe dogs. We have many cafes like this in Seoul with all kinds of animals. Let's save those for another time. Thanks for now. We will continue with the focus of the day. This morning, we start with a workshop on K-REACH pre-registration before looking into global trends of chemical management and a global approach to notification of new chemicals and polymers. In the afternoon, we'll close our doors and talk about secrets in the supply chain. After that, we can all relax at the welcome reception. Thank you for watching and looking forward to seeing you tonight.